Uh, this is troubles and trials, stumbling blocks, or stepping stops, stepping stops or stumbling blocks, just like what I just did. <clears throat> um, but before we uh, start, even though we're rolling, I want to pray for Mary Kashatka, and uh, they've um, got a somebody, a criminal, running around in their neighborhood. We want to just pray for her, and. Um, She's with the Lord, but she's, she, we're with her. How about that? Let's, let's just combine them both. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and <clears throat> we thank you for Mary. We thank you for her heart. We thank you, Lord, how she seeks you and puts you first. Lord, that she's here with us tonight on Skype, therefore just here with us in spirit also. <clears throat> we ask you to protect her. We ask you to move by your spirit, and instead of just protecting her from evil, Lord, fill that house and her heart full of the Holy Spirit as he moves and lifts up Christ, and let what could have been a bad situation be glorious to you, Father, as you fellowship with her and she with you in your son. Father, we thank you. Uh, we ask you to... Um, seal off her property, Lord, and to let the, the, the people in charge, the police and whatever, find this guy and put him, put him away so that people may be at peace. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All righty. If you would, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. We're going to talk about <clears throat> the temptings of Satan uh, we just got through with the testings of God, and we've covered the sufferings of Christ, and we've covered uh, chastisement. <clears throat> and so, um, after we finish this one, we will have dealt with the four main afflictions that we call troubles and trials. <clears throat> However, there's a chapter called labor pains, and that relates to um, the travail you would go through to bring forth Christ. And then there's a part two in this book called The Great Revelation of Job. And it is about God's desire to reveal his son in us and that he will take us through quite a bit to get us to that. All right, this one's about the tempting of Satan. <clears throat> and I don't think there's probably anybody better uh, that, that fits that bill than Jesus himself, we get more information about temptation in this fourth chapter of Matthew. So um, if you're there, we're going to read from verse 1 through verse 11. Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested or tempted by the devil. <clears throat> and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. Verse 8, Again the devil taketh him up, into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me <clears throat> then saith Jesus unto him my translation says be gone Satan be gone Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. <clears throat> All right, so here we have what's 
termed, at least in my Bible, it's called the temptations of Christ, the temptations of Jesus. And <clears throat> if you'll notice, the, the temptations of Satan, they're all coming in, at him in relation to one thing, sonship, if thou be the son of God, over and over. What's being tempted has tempted him to move outside of sonship. <clears throat> And so that's, and that is the enemy. Now, one of the things you have to remember, too, <clears throat> is that Satan and Jesus, this isn't their first time to meet, or at least Satan and the Son of God. I mean, way, I mean, I would assume way back before maybe the world was even made, angels were around, and they knew God, and they knew his Son. Right? I mean, before he fell, I mean, think about it. <clears throat> All right. Well, I was thinking about it. I was thinking, this isn't his first, you know, this isn't, this isn't, their, this isn't their first rodeo, you know. <clears throat> and, um, but I noticed the wording, Satan is saying, if you're the son of God. Now remember, before this happened was the baptism where Jesus was baptized, just exactly prior to this. And Jesus comes to be baptized, and the heavens are open, and God says himself, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Okay? So... But Jesus was incarnate. He didn't look anything like what God looked like on the throne of glory, if you will. He looked like a common everyday man. Maybe he looked like a carpenter's son. So he's not for sure who's in there. Now that's kind of a trial for him. Because he doesn't know who's in you, if it's you or Jesus. You know, <clears throat> so, um, but before we get into the fullness of that, just that first verse, verse 1, then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. <clears throat> what? What's the Spirit doing leading him to the devil? I thought the Bible said lead us not into temptation. I've often prayed, Lord, Lead us not into temptation. We can get there all by ourselves, you know. <laughs> but, you know, most people are thinking this is, this is, you know. In fact, many Christians don't even want to read this scripture because it's too hard for them to handle the fact that the spirit would actually lead you to be tempted by the devil. <clears throat> but again, you have to realize that the spirit is leading the son of God the Son of God. And so the enemy is going to test him whether he's the Son of God. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus the Son of God? Okay, so we got no problems here then, right? All right. <clears throat> but the devil doesn't know that. He's not sure if that really is the Son of God because, again, he doesn't look anything like, like what he did in glory. And so he's, he's, he starts off, and, and all, every one of the temptations, you know, we think, okay, the devil's tempting me to, you know, the devil's tempting me to, to eat trail mix. Oh, that's what I was <laughs> But I'm already overweight, so what is this? <laughs> so, you know. Uh, so we put it on those kind of basis. Well, the devil tempted me to, you know, this and that. You know, a whole lot of that, the devil doesn't need to tempt you. If, you, if you're functioning by the old nature, you're going to do things that, you know, many of the things that I don't even want to name. <laughs> and I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't, don't want to know, you know. <clears throat> um, so here Jesus is veiled before him. And he's seeking to find out, is this him? And that's what he does with you, too. He wants to find out, is that, is that Jesus in you? Or is that you? <laughs> now, let's face it. If you're born again, we all have Jesus in us. 
Amen? But the devil's not tempting him for factual proof that somewhere in you is Jesus. The devil knows exactly how Jesus operates. Jesus will handle certain things a certain way, and humans will handle them a different way. So he's going to throw these specific temptations because he knows what the Son of God will do. You know what I mean? And he knows, and, and, if, and if he doesn't respond that way, see, he's, he is not going, you know, let me rip off that, that human face and look inside your being to see if it's Jesus. He's not looking for Jesus that way. He has been, he was, before he was a fallen angel, he knew how God operated. He knew that he was just a certain way. And we don't, we didn't. But he did. And so now he's going to test him on those things that make him God. Or those things that make him the son of God. Or those things. And remember, <clears throat> we have been made partakers of the divine nature. So we have Christ in us and we have that, that nature. All right. So this is the, this is the basis of, of his temptations is that he's... He's just trying to find out, uh, the way we say it in Texas, he's trying to find out who rules the roost. You know, is that Jesus <laughs> or is that you? You know, you've heard me talk about, you know, when somebody, if somebody uh, in the Old Testament walked into Jerusalem and said, you know, I need God, where can I find God? They would say, go down this street and then cut over two blocks and then you'll come to the temple and you knock on the temple door and the Lord will be there. Okay? Well, we're the temple. And when people knock on your door, does Jesus answer? That's the question. That's the question. You know, oh, he, you know, and here's our, here would be our response when we answer. You know, yes, can I help you? I was busy with something. What do you want? Uh, I was told I could find Jesus in his temple. Is he here? Yes, he's here. He's in the back. Way back. And I'm way forward. What do you want? <clears throat> well, I wanted Jesus out of. I wanted Jesus. That's why I came to this temple. I wanted to meet. Je I wanted to meet with Jesus. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so it starts with the the first temptation here. Well, let me make sure there's anything. When he had uh, fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Last time I fasted forty days and forty nights, I was hungry. Folks. Some of you get hungry when you skip one meal. <laughs> and the devil comes along and goes, is that Jesus in there? Get away from me! I've got a headache! I want to eat! <clears throat> All right, don't get mad at me. All right, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. All right, so here he is. He's... Wanting to know if you're the son of God. And so he's coming at it like this. He says, okay, you're, you're hungry. And you, if God is your father, or if you are of God, then you could have God do, you know, a miracle for you. And he would take care of you. He'll do a miracle for you to take care of you. All you got to do is ask or talk God into it or whatever. <clears throat> well, we know Jesus fed 5,000, didn't he? Another time he fed 4,000. So he's got no problem feeding people. But you got to understand how the Godhead works. 
See, we, all we understand is us and all we've ever seen. I mean, like the devil at least had seen God at work, you know. All we've ever seen is this down here. But but the three circles I drew, I mean, it looks like an atom, you know, or thereabouts. It's, it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that the way that they operate is they don't have to do everything for themselves. They don't have to be selfish because they take care of one another. The Father declares the Son. The, Holy Spirit, the, the Son declares the Father. The works that I do are not my own. They're, they don't know, the Holy Spirit won't come and declare himself, you know. It's the spirit of, of, it's another world and it's another realm, it's another understanding. It's, it's where we're supposed to be being brought to. And so Satan knows that. Lucifer knows that. He's a, he was an angel. He saw how God operated. So he knows if that's the son of God, I'm going to throw some things at him. And he's either going to act on his own behalf Or he's not going to. He's going to defer to the Father. In some way, he'll defer to the Father or the Holy Spirit. You see that? So, verse 3 again, When the tempter came to him, he asked, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Um, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, And, and I sort of said it wrong in one point. The this, this temptation was, if you're the son of God, you command that these, breads be, bread be, these stones be made to bread. Okay, so you use your power for yourself. Now, Jesus, again, did the same thing when feeding thousands and thousands almost 10,000 in two different cities. But he wasn't doing that for himself. In fact, it even says, he looked on the multitudes and they were hungry and da-da-da-da and he said, sit down, put them into groups, give me a couple of loaves and fishes. Boom. Everybody was filled and they had baskets full. Everybody was filled is the key word there. He's filling everybody. It didn't say, well, Jesus ate first, you know. Uh, Deb and I were missionaries in Jamaica, and uh, their, their <coughs> buzzards, their vultures, are a little different than ours here in Texas. I mean, you're raised in Texas, you see vultures and all the time, buzzards. <coughs> they were different, and I had noticed this, that when something died, they would all come down and flock around, some closer and some a little further away, But it looked like nobody was eating. And then I would watch him for a while, and then one would come down, and he would go over there and he'd eat. And when he got through, the rest of them would move in. So I asked the Jamaican, I said, what is the story with that? And they said, well, they were, I said, why were they all waiting? And then this one, all of a sudden, and they said, well, they were waiting for pastor. That's what they called him, pastor. And they said, when pastor eats, Then they all can come and eat after that. And I just went, that is not, see, that sounds like this temptation here. I mean, me, my response is, that ain't right. I'll be the last one to eat. I'm not going to eat before everybody else. I'm not, that's not my spirit. And, but that was the spirit that had been established in Jamaica for years and years and years. Well, the pastor, he's somebody special. He's a big shot, so he eats first. And then once he's done, then we all, you know, We can come eat. <clears throat> Jesus is not that way. He, when he sees everyone else hungry and they hadn't gone 40 days and 40 nights without food like he had, he takes care of their need. 
But when, when Satan says, if, let's find out if you're the son of God, why don't you take these stones and make them into bread for yourself? Why don't you take care of yourself? He said, man shall not live by bread alone. I live by another. I live by the Father. Again, he said, I, li I don't live by miracle. I don't live by bread. I don't live by, I don't live by scarfing things, gathering things, pulling to myself. I live by what is true in the Father, what proceeds out of the heart of the Father, out of the mouth of the Father. That's where I live from. Okay, that's, that's the devil's first clue. You know what? This might be the Son of God. This, that, that's not your normal reaction for a hungry person when you, you know, give them the opportunity to grab something for themselves. They always, if it's us, we grab something for ourselves. If it's Christ in us, we do something different. All right, so next temptation. Verse uh, 5, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this. The devil's quoting the scripture. <laughs> the devil's quoting scripture. And I think he does that in people's minds a lot. He'll quote some scripture that, that you know, is going to put us under law or something else. He's just trying to get us all screwed around and messed up. But the Son of God in us, Christ in us. Oh, there's hope for all of us there. There's hope. But it's not random hope, people. This is... This is the life of the nature of Jesus. This is, his, this is the way that he is. We have to know the way that he is. We have to know, okay, here's what we do, any of us. Here's what Christ does. Here's his spirit and here's my spirit. Here's his way and here's my way. Because the devil is not just tempting random stuff. He's trying to tempt his way to find out, is that Jesus in there, in this way that Jesus is, or is it us, see? And so, he comes with the scripture. He comes with the scripture. All right, well, we, you know, and I've heard people say, well, if it's in the word of God, then, well, that's in the word of God? Well, we, we take it literally. No, this is talking about God's care for his son from his heart, but the same God that cares and quote, had the scripture quoted concerning his son also spared not his only son because they're all in this self-giving spirit together and they're all self-giving and they're all for it with one another. You see what I'm saying? They're all, I mean, God is a father, Jesus is a lamb, the Holy Spirit is a dove, and in and those are all pitiful examples of their spirit of selflessness and of giving. <clears throat> so, so this is declaring how the father cares for his son, but the son responds. And he says, and this is verse 7, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. Okay, so he's saying, you know, to, to put myself in jeopardy um, and to force God's hand to take care of me. And people do that a lot, you know. Well, okay, I'll just blindly walk into this situation and God will protect me, you know. It would be, and we face this a lot, like at Mardi Gras. 
rough areas in Mardi Gras, rough, rough areas. And somebody says, well, we'll just, uh, we're going to go over here and, you know, uh, talk to these uh, hell's angels. <clears throat> and somebody says, you know, I, I don't think you ought to be doing that. Oh, God will take care of you. Well, did you hear that from God? No, God just, you know, God will take care of me. Well, as the leader, I was constantly in tune with the Father and had my faith with him because we had a ton of people that would go and a ton of horrible bad things can happen at Mardi Gras. And I wanted to know every step was of the Lord and none of it was tempting the Lord my God. Well, we're here and we're serving God and he ought to take care of us, you know. And some of you remember the fact that, I mean, we just, it seemed like we'd just barely gotten there with the instruments when they got stolen that time. Yeah, we'd just gotten there. They were in the van. We were just checking out for our first day. Came back to the van and they'd stole all of our equipment, all of our expensive stuff, expensive flutes, expensive saxophone. When I say expensive, we're talking thousands of dollars. All of it stolen. <clears throat> and I just said, well, let's gather up here and let's pray. And I think there are probably a few people ready to go, Lord, kill that person or whatever. And I said, Lord, we just give all of this to him. We're not going to be robbed. Like Jesus wasn't murdered. He laid down his life. He was a sacrifice. You know? I said, we're not going to be robbed. We're just going to give all of this. And so I could see a few of them kind of going, what? You know, they were young. You know? And <laughs> like, you know. But what, else, what choice do we have? We can, we can regret that the rest of our lives or we can live by Christ. You know, and we said, we forgive him right now. Don't lay any of this to his charge. You deal with him the way you want to. You, you know better than us, so we're not going to bring something down on his head. He'll get in trouble surely later, but you will do with him. But we're gonna, we want this not laid to his charge. All right. <clears throat> That's the same thing. Jesus is saying, look, I'm not going to put God to the test. I'm not going to ask him to jump through my hoops. I don't, I'm not God. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to be throwing myself into the fire and then asking him to pull me out. You know? <laughs> you know? <clears throat> All right. Um, and it sounds like the heart of Jesus is, look, I'm not, I don't want to put God to the test. It's that thing. I don't want to want to do that to him this it doesn't feel I'm imposing on him instead of flowing with him I'm like a you know instead of an eye that's part of the body I'm like a speck in the eye that can't make him where you can't see correctly or something you know and some people you know I've seen people that are instead of functioning as a member of the body they're more like a parasite attached to the body they're drawing life out of it they're getting everything but they're putting nothing back into it it's just what they can get that's the same spirit that's what I'm trying to communicate there's a spirit behind that you know and the devil knows that the son of God is not that way you know that's why he's tempting him on those kind of fronts <clears throat> alright so let's go to the last one here um, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. <clears throat> all right. So he is, um, He is tempting Jesus to do whatever it takes to get ahead, which in this case includes falling down and worshiping Satan. Now, that may sound really far-fetched in our world today, but I have known people that came to our church and they came for at least a year, maybe maybe even a couple of years, and they were there. I didn't find out until later, but they were there 
because they had something in mind they wanted to get from God. Okay. And so six months passes and they don't get what they wanted to get from God. And a year passes and they don't get what they wanted to get from God. And so after a certain period of time, <clears throat> they said, well, we're leaving the church. I said, well, where are you going? Well, <clears throat> We asked God to do so-and-so, and he never did it. <clears throat> I said, well, you're going to another church or, you know, to maybe we're just weak in faith around here and we just don't have it together. I mean, there are other churches and some good, good pastors even in this city, and <clears throat> be sure and check them out. And uh, they said, no, no, we're going to go to a, a psychic. Well, we need some answers. I'm going, you know. <clears throat> I handle things a lot better now than I did back then. <laughs> I was actually floored. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. Really? I mean, this is what you're going to do? You know? <clears throat> and I uh, remember King Saul did the same thing. He went to, you know. <clears throat> and, um, and they said, well, if God's not going to do it for us, we'll find somebody who will. I'm just going, I, yeah. I was, honestly, I was too floored to say anything else. I mean, I, if I'd been down the road a little bit, I would have I had some snappy comebacks, you know. <laughs> and I had nothing. It was just like, I, I'm just, I don't even know what to think about this. I love Jesus, and I don't care if Jesus never gives me what I want or never, if, if life doesn't, go the way that I think it is, I just cannot leave Jesus. I just can't go looking somewhere else for what, what Jesus is the fulfillment of. <clears throat> so anyway, I mean, it looks great. This situation looked great. He's taken up on a really high mountain. And I, and I you know, I mean, listen to this. And the devil taketh him up. I'm gonna lift up Jesus. I'm gonna lift him up high. I'm going to lift him up real high. And, you know, some people go, well, if I'm going to be exalted and lifted up like I deserve, then that's probably the Lord. But it could be the devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people can't discern this because, they're, because, because their ego makes them believe that they deserve something and Christ's ego, he deserves everything. And yet he comes down here and he humbles himself. You know what I mean? He becomes like a man. He washes disciples' feet and all this kind of stuff. And everything about him is the exact opposite of the temptations that are coming his way. So in a certain sense, you could say these weren't temptations at all. I mean, in a certain sense, you could say this isn't temptation to the Son of God. You know, you know. Takes him up on a high thing, shows him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. All right. See, the devil's going to run into trouble here because Jesus worships the Father. He honors him above anything else. It's not a religion to him. I, I want you all to see that because for a lot of us, it's a religion. We're down here on the earth. We, get, you know, we got buildings with steeples. We got pews. We got, oh, you know, so it's a religion to us. It's not a religion to Jesus. It's, it's the nature of his way. And he's in it with others who flow in that same spirit. So when... If, if the devil didn't promise him great things, he just said, well, worship something else, Jesus wouldn't have gone for it either. It's not in his being to do that, okay? But Jesus knows who he is. I mean, I love those scriptures there in the John 13 where it says, 
And Jesus, knowing that he'd come from the Father and is going to return to the Father, and that all things were delivered into his hands. Now, he's, he's about to go to the cross. <laughs> that all things are delivered into his hands. Kneels down, takes off his robe, puts, you know, girds himself, and washes the disciples' feet. And I won't get into the whole picture, but I'll just tell you this very simply. He was washing, for example, when he's washing Peter, you know, Peter says, no, don't wash my feet, then wash all of me. And it's that same thing, that same mindset. Well, I'm a mess all up and down. And, of course, Peter was, but he, didn't, he wasn't seeing things the way the Lord was seeing things. And Judas was still there when he was washing feet. He hadn't left yet. And if you check the scriptures and the way they're worded and everything, Jesus is basically saying, I am here washing one part of the body that needs help. That's, that's what he was saying. You, you check it out. That's what he was saying. And even though he knew that Satan was going to deny him, he couldn't be anything but Jesus. And that's where some people really love abusing Jesus because he can't help but be what he is. You know, he's a lamb. So what are the words? Then Jesus saith unto him, <clears throat> Be gone, get thee hence, get behind me, Satan. Because Jesus knew that he came to die. In other words, okay. <clears throat> What's your job down here? The cross. You know, I mean, that was it, really, honestly. There wasn't anything else, you know. Uh, he considered, in John 12, 24, that every miracle and everything he'd done up to that point wasn't bearing fruit at all, that fruit would only come out of death. Life would only come out of death. And so for him, while we may glory in all of those things, he didn't glory in it. He said, now is the Son of Man glorified. The time has come where I can manifest it on a cross instead of uh, living it where people can't see it. Because you can attribute, you can see stuff in people and attribute all kind of motives. You can attribute bad motives or good motives. But most of the time, we don't really know everyone's motive if it's pure or if it's, you know, we don't. <clears throat> we don't. I've often said that. Um, Actions don't prove who we are. It's reactions. It's how we react. Because, you know, we put on faces. You know, you walk into church on Sunday morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I just murdered somebody, but I can't tell you. you know? <laughs> um, but, you know. And if there really was someone like that, then you, you do something that they don't like or whatever, and they react to it. Then all of a sudden you see all this stuff, and you go, that's not very pretty, you know. <clears throat> well, it's what we were talking about in our last class, where when God tests us, he's testing for gold, which is Christ in us. He wants to bring forth the gold. That's the purpose of the fire, is to get the gold. He wants Christ. He's not trying to make it hard for us. He just wants Jesus. He put Jesus in us, and he'd like to get some, some of that back. The devil, on the other hand, <clears throat> he does want to trip us up. And, he, and these are the kind of things that he does, because he's not just, I mean, again, the temptations that are going on here, he's not just trying to make people sin. He's trying to get us to go contrary to the Son of God. That's his goal. That may be, you, you may call it sin. The Father, I think, would call it not Jesus. You know, the, the word sin, even it's the, the Greek word, I think, is har harmicia, something like that. It's close to that. 
and it's and it means to miss the mark. The word sin means to miss the mark. Well, what do you think the mark is? <laughs> Jesus, you know. Who was it? Elijah. laying in bed, and one of the kings went up to see him. And he said, will I defeat the enemy? He said, take bow and arrow. Walk over to the window and shoot. He shoots. He says, now take the bow and stamp the enemy. And he, he did it one, once or twice. And he said, you didn't... You didn't do it enough. You didn't have enough in it. You should have done it more, and the enemy would have been wiped out. But you were half-hearted in this, and now you're going to have to deal with the enemy of your whole kingdom. And it looks so good at first because, you know, he's coming to the prophet. He wants to hear from God, and he says, take bow and arrow and shoot. And he gets over there. Pew, man, that arrow goes. And he says, I forget the words, but they're, they're beautiful words of how, you know, this is the arrow of the Almighty. And this is now take bow. And he, you know, and he goes, and he goes, what, that's it? That's all you got? That's all the oomph you got? You know? And he said, you, the enemy could have been totally defeated, but you, you were too half hearted. And so now you're going to have to deal with that mess. So Jesus says, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It's not just commitment. It's this, the Godhead. It's the way they are. I'm, I, I hope and pray that you can see that it's not just a deeper level of commitment that Jesus is talking about here. It is, if, if Christ be in you, this is true of you. If, you know, Christ's form. Because Paul was praying for the Galatians, and they had Christ. But he was praying that Christ, you know, that Christ would be formed in them, you know. And it's this son formed in us so that, so that it's not a mental commitment or how do we, how do I become more what God wants or I don't even know. All the religions thing that we go off and, you know, beat ourselves or do whatever that we do that make us think that we're going to be more acceptable to God when we're only, as we said last class, accepted in the beloved. And he's beloved of God, and we're hidden in the beloved. You can't get any more love than being in the beloved. You know? <clears throat> um, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Remember, not commitment, but this. I'm going to worship the Father. He, he is... My covering, the Holy Spirit is my covering. I am his covering. I am their covering. It's beautiful if you can comprehend it. All right. So then finally, close in verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That always bugged me. Well, it did, because I'm thinking, couldn't you fellas have showed up like, way earlier than this, you know, I'm really, that's the way I look at it, I mean, I don't so much now, but it was like, you know, here I am in the trial, the devil's on my back, I'm hungry, I'm being attacked, and you guys wait till it's over with, it's like they're, uh, they're, there's this big oak tree, and they're behind it, and they go, okay, the devil's left, let's go help Jesus, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, look at the order, then the devil leaveth them, and behold, Angels came and ministered unto him. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm putting myself always in, the, in that position. I'm thinking, look, I needed your ministry before this. I needed you to show up. That's carnal Christianity, folks. We're always wanting an, a way out instead of Christ being the way through. And we can try all the methods. We can try all of the all of the different things, but you don't get to this son. You don't get in son formed according to his spirit and his nature by just time or 
reading the Bible or whatever. It's what we talked about last class. That cross has to be applied. Remember the beaten gold? The beaten gold. Beaten gold. Deity. Beaten to bring forth the body in the seven branch candlestick. And, and you will, you know, that, that beating is to get the dross out. No, that beating is to get the gold to come forth. It does get the dross out in the process. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like the samurai sword or some of the strongest metal that there ever existed. And they would take that and they would beat the fool out of it. And then they would get the, the, the fire so much hotter than anybody who had ever made sword. And then they would go over it again and again and again. So I don't know how much they understood, but each time they're beating those molecules those atoms closer and closer together and the fire is bringing them there and then the beating while it's still hot and it's just bringing them all closer together all of this is coming in tighter and closer all of those atoms and molecules are coming in and it becomes so strong that it was stronger than any sword okay well this is even greater we're talking about not um we're talking about not just let the body come together, let the body come together. No, it will come together if it has the spirit. And it'll get tighter and tighter because it's one spirit. You know, it's one spirit. And so, you know, I don't know how you feel about all that, but to me, that is such a relief because, uh, you know, I loved the Lord, and I wanted the Lord, and I tried so hard, and I prayed, and I did all of the things that I was taught that I should do, but they were all about me still, and I was not getting any help, and I, did, I wasn't in a position where I would blame my teachers or the churches that I went to or whatever. I wasn't blaming them. I was, it was like, what is wrong with me? And that can be negative, and that can take you down. What is wrong with me? Why does everybody else seem to be able to walk on water, and I can't do it? That's not the deal. Wrong place. We're looking at the wrong thing. You know, if, if that same person, if they'll look at themselves in their failures and beat themselves and go, I'm the, they'll glorify themselves if everything goes right. Do you see how that would work? Because it's all self-focused. You know, when it's all bad, then I'm, I'm just a bad person and everything. And, you know, well, that's self-focused. You know, it's self-pity. Okay, over here, people glorifying you over here. Now it's self-righteousness. Yeah, I'm something else. So we go, I, see, I ain't like you. That's what the Pharisees did. And in truth, you, they were just like them. <laughs> self-focused. Self-focused. So how do you break with self-focus? Well, I guess you got to get, you, you know, you got to go down before you're going to go up. <laughs> and you got to get to a place where you just have really felt like you've tried and tried. And, and instead of getting to that place where I've tried and tried and then quit, you get to that place where you've tried and tried and you say, oh, what a wretch I am. Who? shall save me not from hell not from punishment for my sins who is going to save me from my ways that are the opposite of this Godhead movement it's all to bring everything it's like you two exist this is not God this is the way we view it you two exist to draw everything to me and I network with you so that I can use you to reach my end well, imagine if they all say, well, I'll network with you so I can use you to reach my ends. And then everybody's king, and then everybody kills one another off. That's called history. <laughs> That's called history. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your son. Your son, thank you. We thank you that he endures temptation. In fact, he doesn't just endure it. He, he shines. He shines in the midst of it because he's 
different than mankind. He's different than me, and he's different from all of us, Father. And, but there's a wonder that you've done. Instead of telling us to be like you, you sent your son to be in us. And you've given us the promise of life, not just of salvation. And I believe your heart. And because I believe out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth speaks, I believe your word because I believe your heart. And I believe that you spared not your own son, but gave him up for us all. He that spared not. Lord, Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus, you are all self-giving to a fault. And I just glorify you. And I glorify your way and your spirit. And I ask you as a under-shepherd, a servant shepherd under you, Lord Jesus, for these sheep that are on Skype or that are here or others that are not here tonight. Father, I pray that you will, uh, that, that you will allow the good shepherd to lead them through these things and you, you'll touch their heart that they might follow him through every step of the path that is needed. Not all blessing, not all hardship, but all leading to conformity to your son. And Father, how can we as sheep Ignore it when even the shepherd himself, the good shepherd, giveth his life for the sheep. How can we not give our lives also as lambs, as living sacrifices? Work it in us, Father. We have much left to grow in the reality of what is settled at the cross. Work it in us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're dismissed. <laughs>